friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a cataract with very small people let us observe this surgery this is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus with a 2.8 mm keratome and now i'm going to do a side port about 3 o'clock hours away from the main incision on the left side this is at mid limbus now the case is under peribulbar anesthesia and there is some vitreous upthrust so the intraocular pressure is on the higher side and as I inject air the air is not staying so there is some vitreous upthrust in this case there is some positive vitreous pressure my plan was to stain the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble but that is not possible if I inject trip and blue dye most of the peripheral part of the cornea will be stained so I have changed my plan I have injected visco this is 2% SPMC and now I am breaking the posterior sinecia with this spatula this is an iris spatula breaking the sinecia all around now the pupil is very small about 2.5 to 3 millimeter when the pupil is so small before applying any pupil expansion ring like B hex we must dilate the pupil by stretching to about 4 millimeter I have a Kuglin hook in my right hand and a Sinsky hook in my left hand. It is better if you have two Kuglin hooks, but I had only co one Kuglin hook in my surgical armamentarium. And now the size of the people will be about 4 millimeter. And now I am going to remove this fibrous band which was around the pupillary margin when you remove this fibrous band from the pupillary margin there is some amount of punctate bleeding now see what has happened as I am trying to introduce the BHEX it got stuck in the main wound the trailing part so to push it inside and then we're going to tuck the leading flange at 5 o'clock centered at 5 o'clock and then I hold the middle tab which is centered at 1 o'clock and these two flanges have been tucked under the iris some more visco the antechamber is really shallow but this device the BHEX people expansion device can be applied in very uh, shallow anterior chamber in presence of very shallow anterior chamber and this is the third flange it is tucked and now I'm going to stain the anterior capsule just placing the tripe and blue dye over the anterior capsule I'm touching the anterior capsule as if I'm painting onto the anterior capsule now I inject visco take a needle in this case take, I took a 26 case bent needle and I'm try, trying to do a portion of the rexis by this needle itself Yes. So, a part of the rex is from one o'clock to about nine o'clock. This about four o'clock hours have been done by this needle. And now, and again, I inject visco, and 
rest of the rexis is being done by the uterita forceps. When there is positive vitreous pressure, the antechamber becomes shallow frequently, so have to come out in between, inject visco again, make the antechamber deep, and then again use the forceps, the uterita forceps. And this is a nice rexis of about 5 millimeter. Dilatation of the pupil is about 5.5 millimeter. And now hydro dissection. This is done. This is being done with this cannula. This is a 27 Gauss cannula. Uh, hydro dissection has been done nicely. The nucleus is depressed. And then the nucleus is rotated and now visco is injected and then the phaco needle is introduced into the anterior chamber in this case the challenges we have had is small people posterior synechia a fibrous band along the pupillary border and vitreous upthrust probably because of Peribulbar anesthesia. Very shallow anterior chamber. There is a ear glazer aridotomy at around 1.30 o'clock. And now I'm going to divide this nucleus and emulsify the nucleus using this FECO probe. The tip of the phaco needle is buried into the substance of the nucleus and in this case I am going to do a vertical job. Just in front of the phaco needle the chopper is chopper pierces onto the nucleus and it is cracked. This is a free nuclear fragment and this is a part of the nucleus could not hold it, it got eaten up so I rotate the nucleus on the other side get onto this thick portion and it becomes free and I could emulsify this and now this is the last part of the nucleus at this time I use the epinucleus mode that is low vacuum low flow rate and now the antechamber is going to be very shallow so I get ready with the visco and immediately inject visco there's a piece of epinucleus at one o'clock now I'm going to use this instrument this is a Simco cannula 23G for removal of these cortex This is the epinuclear piece, it has come out. And now this is cortex from 3 o'clock and 2 o'clock. The cortex from 12 o'clock or 12 30 o'clock didn't come. Now I go through the side port and remove the cortex from 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock it came easily but this small speck of cortex at 12 o'clock is not coming now when the antechamber is shallow we cannot go through the main wound we will touch the corneal endothelium so inject visco again 
make the antechamber deep and then go through the main wound the visco will come out gradually and you will get some time to remove this cortex so you will get about 10 15 seconds time and in that time you have to remove that cortex and it has come out the axis is very good it's a circular axis almost and the posterior capsule is clean there is no cortical uh, fibers sticking to the posterior capsule no cells visco has been injected into the anterior chamber and now always enlarge the main wound little bit when you have B hex in the anterior chamber because we go into the anterior chamber and deliver the lens in the capsular bag like this. The leading haptic should go into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic should be delivered in front of the B hex ring so that the B hex ring is not depressed by the haptic. And now the VHX is removed. The flanges are untucked in this way, and the VHX is pulled out. And now is the time to remove all the visco that is there in the antechamber and in the capsular bag. And one more thing is there on the posterior surface of the lens there is something sticking this one this comes from the cartridge some material from the cartridge sticks to the lens sometimes and it has come out there some more material sticking on the right side it has also come out the antechamber is shallow so I'm walking very carefully and now we can see that the people has remained dilated because we stressed the papal to some extent and this is only irrigation to remove all the visco from the antechamber from the antechamber angle forming the antechamber through the side port and now the side port is to be closed this is a bit of moxifloxacin no this is a bit of tramsnorone acetate in this case I'm just giving a tramsnorone acetate wash inject a bit of tramsnorone and wash it out now whatever few particles remain in the antechamber after this washout that reduces postoperative inflammation to a great extent. So whenever you operate on a uveitic cataract when there is synechia, posterior synechia, you can think of doing this antechamber lovers by tramsloron acetate. and this is closure of the side port and then a final lavage of the anterior chamber the main wound does constructed in such a way that this will not require any hydration though there is positive vitreous pressure there is vitreous upthrust 
check the integrity of the ohms and close the case thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills always take up challenging cases particularly when you have a senior person around you who can help you out in case you have some difficulties raise the bar of your skill be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect compassion and great surgical skills